Blender is my favorite piece of software. However, I wish out of the box that had a bit more of a robust array system. You can do things like array effectors and circle arrays, but they take a long time to set up, which is why we created the Better Array Geometry Node system. This simplifies the process by making things like lines, grids, circles, mesh, curve, effectors, and more easily accessible with a quick drag and drop solution. It's also 25% off as part of the Dynamic Visual Effects Pack and my other products on the Cyber Sale this weekend at Blender Market. But don't worry, there's a free version as well. We're giving away the entire circle array and effector portion of it for free. You can download it now at the link below. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can create a simple scene like this using the free version. Then if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll walk through all the features of the paid version as well. But for now, let's dive in and learn how to create motion graphics easier with this free tool. Now you might remember this character in my old tutorials and where we used him to animate to audio. And in that tutorial, we had to create the circular arrays around the character. And it took a lot of time. It was pretty cumbersome with the full array modifier setup. However, let's look at how easy it is to do now with this free tool. I'm gonna to drag and drop the better array system into the scene. Under add collection, I'm gonna uncheck instance, which will allow me to edit the collections over here. Now this is the full paid version, so there's some extra stuff here. A lot of these are just example collections for you to get started with, but we'll go ahead, delete those for now. Grab the array object. We're gonna choose the object to clone up here. So we're just gonna go ahead and choose our egg right here. Now by default, this egg is showing the grid mode. And you can see that we can just change this through the various modes such as line or as we're going to use the circle. And now you can see here that we're getting a circle array. So let's go ahead, grab our array object, and we're just gonna drag this down here onto the floor. Now we can look at the various options we have. I'm going to snap back into the camera view here, and we're gonna look at the circle mode options, which we can twirl down over here. First of all, we can set how many points we want on that circle, and then we can set how many rings we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and set three rings. Then I'm going to bring in the circle radius here. And down here, you can change how dense it gets on the outer rings. So by bringing down the add points to ring amounts, you can see that the same amount of objects are cloned to each different ring. However, when we turn this back up, it adds points to those rings so that as you get outwards, it still maintains its density along the lines there. I'm just gonna leave mine at a simple one. Now next up, we have the trim circle. And this actually lets you take the circle and trim it around. So you can actually use this to do some pretty cool motion graphics animations. We also have the distance point to merge. And what this will do is take all the points on the circle and merge them based on their difference. So the larger I set this, it's gonna make more points begin to disappear as it merges them together. Again, this could be great for some abstract motion graphics. Now we can also use the distance offset here, which will change the distance of the rings from the center ring there. Now I'm just gonna snap back into camera view here. And let's go ahead and spice up this little character by adding some random color variation. We can actually do that simply here in the shader. I'm going to grab the egg here, go to the body, and then here under the base color, what we're going to do is grab a color ramp, set this to constant, move this down, and let's just add a couple stops. Do distribute from stops left evenly. Now we can grab this basic color here, and I'm just gonna insert this into all of these, and then just kind of shift over the hue at random here. Let's do a nice purple as well. Great, now we can plug that into the base color and you can see that's going to give us a odd result there. But we can drag this out and we can choose this to be object info random. And then what that will do is randomize the color per character that we have. And you can see that if we drag this out, we can change how much we want each of those to appear. So that's one way we can just add a bit of visual variety to the scene quickly. But let's take a look at a few more options on the array over here. Also included in the free version is this effector. So if I enable this effector and click the array, you'll see that a gizmo appears. This gizmo is actually part of the new geometry node system that you can manually insert gizmos. And if you look, you can see as I move this around, how it is affecting the various objects. Now I have my chicken on in the middle there, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that chicken off. And you can see here that as we move this around, how is it affecting all the different characters? And you can see that if we come down here, we can choose the translation, the scale, the rotation, the position min, max, the random position, and more. You can also see here that it is feeding colors into the object as well. And you can call upon those with the color attribute. So if I was to take that color attribute here and grab this over onto our egg character, and I paste that color attribute in here. So this is just the color, and we plug that into the base color. You can see that now, the gizmo is controlling the color of the birds. And right now it's scaling them out of view. So we can adjust the scale. And I'm just gonna change the scale min to 0.75 so that you can see those a bit easier. 
You can see that as we get near them all, they are changing based on the colors that we have selected down there. You could also change these to black and white values and use those to drive other properties, such as your roughness, displacement, and more. Of course, we have other options as well. Up here is where you control the translation of the gizmo. Down here is where you control the effects of the gizmo. And here you can change the fall off distance, making it go further or closer to the effector that's included. But for now, let's go ahead here and turn off the effector. And I'm just going to grab my egg here and remove that color attribute. Just get us back to the default color here. Let's take a look at some of the other features. I'm gonna switch over to material mode for this next one and show you one of my favorite features. If you scroll down over here, you'll see that there's a look at. Click look at object, you'll see that everything snaps into the center point. But if I choose an object here, for example, this empty over here, you'll see now everything is looking at that empty. And then I can animate that empty and move it around. And you can see how fun it is as it kind of flies through there and they all kind of snap down. So this is definitely distance by location, giving it that kind of fun look when you fly through. Again, another great thing to use for some motion graphics and could be tied up to the effector as well. I'm gonna switch back to render mode here just so we have a bit of a prettier image to look at. And what I'm going to do is come over here to the ray modifier and look at some of the other options. Now, one thing we have here is use collection as curve. Right now we're cloning an object, but if I do use collection here, I can then choose the collection up there. So I'm gonna go ahead here and choose the eggs collection. Now in this eggs collection, you can see that I have the little chicken here with various states of opening on their egg. And for the clone type, I can choose to either iterate or do at random. So if I do iterate, it'll just go one, two, three down the list. And if I do random, you can see here, it'll randomize the choose of the eggs there. And I can go ahead and play with the seed until I get something that I like. Now, of course, we have all these various shapes. For example, here, we have the line shape which will just give us a line of eggs. And when you open this up, you can see that we have all the various options, such as the distance, the amount, and more. Now, if I come back up here, we've already done circle, so let's move down to mesh. Now, when you do mesh, it's going to go ahead and choose the torus by default, but you can come down here under the object, set whether to do that by vertex, edges, or faces, and just choose whatever mesh you want to use. And probably my favorite on the list is the clone mode, Curve. So if we click curve, then we can go ahead and select a curve object in our scene. I'm going to grab this Bezier curve that I've just added to the scenes. And you can see how it's now adding along the line there. I'm going to hide this ground just for simplicity's sake. And what we can do with this array is have a couple options here. So curve mode, we can set to clone on curve points. This will only add to the curve points that you have, or we can do number of clones and just set the amount we want. So I'm going to go ahead and set mine to something like 30 here. And then I can trim the curve and I can trim from either end. I could do a position offset and move them along the curve. And then I can do to whether I want it to follow the rotation or not. So you can see over here how all their faces are moving to follow the rotation. So you can see, especially with the trim curve, the position offset and the follow spline, how you could quickly do motion graphics. And this is also much easier, in my opinion, than using an array modifier with a curve. Instead, this simplifies the process and puts all those controls for an easy animation in one spot. Now, as I said, this is currently on sale in Blender Market for 25% off on Cyber Sale Weekend, along with my other products. There's a free version, so feel free to download that and try it out. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.